הקדוש, בוקר אור, מסכת קידושין, דף סמך א' עמוד א', 61A1. סייז דה גמרא. יא, סייז דה גמרא, we're going to start on סמך עמוד ב' towards the bottom. where the Gemara actually comes and says, that it says by Hegdesh, but there we were talking about that what happens if a person comes and he shows a bika, he shows a valley, so he said, ena mekudeshet, she's not going to, meaning that a guy comes and he says, I have a field. All of a sudden he comes, he shows him a valley. Well, it's nothing. So the Gemara says, obviously, so the Gemara answered, no, tzicha, we're talking about, then I keep it which means that he took a field with arisut. Arisut means, yeah, He says he's taking it um, as a sharecropper. And since he's taking it as a sharecropper, right, he comes and he says it's going to be, um, don't think that Ki'ilu, the, the, the field's not his, even though he's a sharecropper. The sharecropper takes part of the field, right, the fruits of the field, but it's not his. Okay, fine. Kabe Gdesh Tanan, Bay Gdesh, it's all she brought down in the Mishnah Berechim. Samechal Afamud Alef, Amagdish Sadeu Bishat HaYovel. Somebody is going to consecrate the field during the time of Yovel. נותן בזרע חומר שעורים, he's going to give, right, he's going to come and he's going to put for the שטח, right, which is fitting for a cool, right, שעורים, חמישים שקל כסף, 50 שקל כסף, yeah, then it says, היו נקעים עמוקים עשרה טפחים, if there were like holes, which was deep ten טפחים, or סלעים or stones, which are גבוה, which is tall, ten טפחים, yeah, So in all those cases, right, ending the dinima. So it's not going to be uh, measured with it in order to come and to start, you know, evaluating the money. If it's going to be less than 10 tfakhim, whether it's depth or height, in the dinima. So then it's going to be measured with it. So so what happened? One more time. I have a field. It's to measure to, if it's up and down, how, if you measure the... the... Right. Exactly. So that's what we're saying. If it's up and down. So that's what we're saying. Meaning like this. As long as it's going to be less than 10 tfakhim tall or less than 10 tfakhim in whether it's in height or in depth, it's all one field. So therefore, I measure the entire field. Meaning the, even though right over here, all of a sudden there's a, uh, whatever you want to call it, a pit, but it's less than 10 tfakhim. Or, or you continue going and all of a sudden there's like a little hill. And it's more than 10. doesn't matter. The entire field is the entire field. But what happens if it's more? Meaning you've got a huge stone. It's a big stone. So exclude that stone. Meaning I'm going to stop there, okay, okay. measure around, and that stone is not considered nothing. It's not considered part of the field. And the same thing with the pit. So the Gemara asks, So we're going to ask, He says, one second. You're not going to make it a Gdesh, right, as part of the field. But it should be made a Gdesh on its own. Which means, okay, fine, Keilu, that it's a different reshut, it's a different property, because it's got 10 tfakhim tall, or 10 tfakhim in the, in the depth, but at the end of the day, it should be like uh, the same property. So the Gemara answers, V'chit and how are you going to tell me now? Kama de lo havi, bet kur, lo chashiv. That if it's not going to be a bet kur, it's not going to be considered, right, as part of the pidyon, or minu, we have a contradiction, sedeh. Right, when it says in the Pasuk, what is it coming to teach you? Right, he says, since it says in the Pasuk, that you're going to have a Zera Chomer, which is a Shetach, which you could plant a Kur of Seorim. So he comes and he says, with 50 Shekel Kesef. That's only in this fashion. I don't know that you're going to include Letech, Vachetzi Letech. Remember, Letech is half of a Kur. Vachetzi Letech is half of that. Right? Se'a. Right? Tirkav. Right? Chatsi Tirkav. Tirkav is half of a se'a. Chatsi Tirkav is going to be, right, half of that. But even if Rova, even if Rebbe of a Kav, Minayin, how do we know then? How do we know that it's going to include it? Sedeh mikom akom. Come teach you Sedeh, right, mikom akom. What does that mean, mikom akom? So he comes and he says, this is going to be the Sedeh. Okay? Amar mor ukva barchama. Says mor ukva barchama. He comes and he says, Haqa, here, Here we're talking about holes which are filled with water, right? So he says, what does that mean? So therefore, since it's whole, full of water, it does not have a din of a sadeh to do with the, the right, the pidyon ekdesh, okay? Right? Loai. So he comes, he says, because it's not bene'e zriya. They're not fitting for zriya. 
Daikinami, therefore it's also deduced because we actually learned Dumia, the Slaim Goim Shemamina. This is compared to the Slaim Goim. Yeah. Yeah, he comes and he says, it's Dumia to the Slaim Godolim. What does that mean? To the big uh, stones. Okay. Daikinami also, Diktani, right? He comes and he says, because it's also written. Yeah, the Dumia, the Slaim Goim Shemamina. Okay. So now says the Gimara, right? As follows. Yahaki, if so. He comes and he says like this. He says, "Afilu pachot mikanami." Even if it's going to be less, that means the slaim are going to be less, right? Than this, it should still be the exact same halacha. Fine. So says the Gemara. Hanau nagne de aramiku. These are called an agan of the sade, which means like this. Sometimes you have right little tiny pieces of the field, which you have like irrigation or whatever it is. So that's what it is. You know, little tiny things that they have water. So therefore, it's it's still part of the field. But to do mecher, we learned in a Mishnah, by this to do with a sale. Somebody comes and he tells his friend, I'm going to sell you a bet kurafar. And you had holes, which are deep, ten tvachim, or or stones, which are high, by right, tall, ten tvachim. They're not going to be measured with it. But if it's going to be less than that, it is going to be measured with it. Even though it's not going to be filled with water. My time, I was reasoning. When a person wants to come and he wants to put money, he does not want to buy a field that it looks like three different places. He wants to buy a field that's all one. Many times, by the way, you should know that it happens not only in fields. It happens in a house. It happens in a, in a hall. I remember we were going to get a hall for the Bet Knesset, but it was like a, it was like a chet. The people that are on one side have nothing to do with the other side, so it, it it's not it's not conducive. It's not together. You're, you're, it looks like you're you're all over the place. And it's like you want that everything should look like one. So the same thing when a person comes and he wants to buy a field, he wants to buy a field that it's all one thing. Not that uh, over there there's a pit, over there ten fachim, and over there there's a big uh, stone which is ten fachim, and it looks like uh, different places all over the place. He wants one thing. Haha over here, but my what's alacha? Do we compare it to Egdesh or to Mechet? Meaning, do we compare it that it's considered like Egdesh, right? And therefore, right, just like over there by Slaim and Ekaim, if it's going to be fitting to measure with this field, then you could come and you're going to redeem it, right? Just like a regular case of Egdesh. So he says, or are you comparing it to Mechet? So says the Gemara, it's much more, uh, it's much more comparable to Egdesh, because he could tell her, I'm being Toreach and I'm going to be Zorea and I'm going to bring the Tvoa to my house. So therefore, he says, it's much more Misaber that the Kiddushim is like Hegdesh. And therefore, when you have Nekaim and Salim, which are fitting to Zriyam, it's a film Nashlim. That means it comes out that you came and you told her, I've got a bet food. Imagine, I've got an acre of land. All of a sudden, you come, but within your acre, you have a pit and then you have a stone and you have this. So now, if you're going to tell me that it's not going to be considered all one entity, so you don't have an acre of land. Because if you're not going to count it with the acre, so then that's it. So now you're not going to be married. So says the Gemara, it's much more mistaber to say that I'm comparing Kiddushim to Egdesh. And therefore, as long as I compare it that it's all one entity, it's considered one entity. Now it's considered one betkut. So if a man comes to a woman and he says, I'm going to get married to you on condition that I have an acre of land. Right? A betkut is not an acre. I just stumped through the, just so you guys should understand what we're talking about. Right? One acre of land, right? Or I've got a double lot. And all of a sudden she comes and she's looking, hey, where's your double lot over there? Yeah, but there's a, I don't know what, a hole. Oh, and wow. over there, there's a, yeah, there's a well. Over there, there's a big uh, a big stone. Or, hey, where, where's your acre of land? So, no, no, that's part of my acre. So, no, it's not counted with it. So then we go into whether it's counted with it or not. So as long as it's compared to Egdesh. Why, why Egdesh? What? Why is it compared to Egdesh? Because again, one more time, there are two different things. There was Egdesh or Mechet. Right? What does that mean? When I come and I'm going to consecrate my field, so he said that if it's going to be pits, which are more than 10 tfachim depth, or stones, which are more than 10 tfachim height, it's not counted with a field, and therefore I don't have to redeem it. So we ask, why don't I say that you should redeem it? Why don't I say that you should redeem it but on its own? So we answer that it's considered part of like a irrigation canal, if it's less than that, if it's more. So that was to do with Hegdesh. There was a second halakha that had to do with Mechet. When the guy comes and he's saying, I'm going to sell you a betkut, I'm going to sell you an acre. And all of a sudden they had these ditches or whatever you want to call them, wells, p- d- holes, uh, b- b- bores, right? You know, p- pits, 
whatever it is, or you had the stones and big mountain, whatever it is, these tall things. So he comes and he says, they're not going to be considered part of it. Okay, and therefore, to be mashing the bet cool. And if it's going to be less, it is going to be. So we said, even though it's not going to be filled with water. So we wanted to come and say, what is Kiddushin? Is Kiddushin compared to Hegdesh or Kiddushin compared to Mechel? And we paskin, the Kiddushin is compared to Hegdesh. And therefore, right, when we're coming and saying that it's going to be compared to Hegdesh, these holes in Slaim, which are fitting for Zriya, are mitztarfin to the field. And therefore, if it's going to be mitztaref, it's got a betkur, it's got a betkur. And now she's going to be married because it actually did mitztaref and it had a betkur. Okay? Yes. Mishnah, if not, then she's not married because it didn't have a bet kuf. Mishnah and Sanech Aleph and Mudalef towards the bottom. Says the Mishnah. New topic. Okay? Rabbi Meir Omer. Rabbi Meir says, Kol Tznai. She'eno ki Tznai b'nei Gad v'nei Ruven. Eno Tznai. Any Tznai, which is not going to be like b'nei Gad v'nei Ruven, is not considered a Tznai. She'nei Mar, as it says in the Pasuk, so it comes Moshe Rabbeinu and he tells him, "If you're going to go past the by with you, and then you're going to give them the land of Eretz Agilad Lachuza, Mochtiv and etc. If they're not going to go by, what does that mean? Remember that the Tznai of Bene Gad of Neruven was a Tznai Kaful. What is a Tznai Kaful? Double. A double, meaning double-sided. Meaning, right? Many times, even in law, right? You have to be very, very careful that it has to be." on both sides. Why? Because if it becomes vague on one side, so then you're in trouble. So what happened was, B'nai Israel, or somebody said, B'nai Ruven, right? B'nai Gadu, B'nai Ruven, they came, right? And they came and they said, hold on one second. Imara. Here comes, the Mishnah says, the Mishnah says, call tonight, any tonight, which is not going to be like the tonight, B'nai Gadu, B'nai Ruven. So what was the tonight, B'nai Ruven? If they come and they go to war, then afterwards they could come and they could get the, the piece of the land, which was going to be ever at then. But if they don't, those words, if they don't, that is called the Tanai Kaful. And by the way, in the Ketubot, that's what you have it. It's a Tanai, which is like, right? This explains it very well. It's saying that no, he, he it's basically videos. when, when one the person the says a condition entering into an agreement, yes, yes, he has to say yes, that yes, the, if the condition is met, yeah. then, then this way, and if it's not, it's not exactly. You have to write both sides, right. which right. I think in contracts, right. exactly in contracts, right. that's what happen, has to happen. Mm -hmm. So, Rabbi Chaniyah Ben Gamiel Omer, Rabbi Chaniyah Ben Gamiel says, Sericha Daval Lomro, the good contracts. It says, you have to actually say it, Shimalek Ken was, if you do not say it, Yesh Bemashma. So then what happens is, is that Shafilu Be'eretz Kena'a no Yinchalu. So then they cannot actually, if they're not going to be making the Tanai, they're not going to be even, not, not, not only Me'eretz Kena'a no Yinchalu. Kol Shikem Me'eretz Kena'a Be'eretz Gila, nothing. That means it's going to be a Kena'a, so they're not going to get nothing whatsoever. That's why they had to come, and they had to do the Tanai Kaful. Because if you're not going to come, and not to, then you will not say there's going to be a Kena'a. And therefore, that's why you always have to make it a double-sided agreement. Okay? Fine. Says the Gemara, Shapir Kamala Ruchanin and Gamliel. So it's good that Ruchanin and Gamliel went and he told Rabbi Meir that how can you come and you say from the Pasuk, we know you're Ruchalitzin, that you need a quite a tonight a fool. He says, it's not, there's no Hokha from there. Because maybe it's only coming to tell you that you're not going to get a Knas to make them like lose completely. So Malachar Rabbi Meir says, Rabbi Meir, it's not going to tell you, you're going to tell me, it's not coming to teach you a tonight a fool. Why don't we just write, that if they're not going to pass by, or if they're not going to pass to fight, right? Why do you need the words Beretz Kenan? Just say they're going to get their their nachala. So fine, they didn't go. They didn't go out to war, but they're going to get. But why do you have to say Beretz Kenan? Why do I need the words Beretz Kenan? Shmamina comes to teach you letnai kaful udata that you need to make a tnai kaful, which is basically the hen and love. If you do this, and if you don't, then do that. You know what I mean? That you have to make it in such a fashion that it's going to be for both sides. Rabbi Chanina ben Gamliel comes to Rabbi Gamliel and comes and says, "Ilok katav rachman." If the Torah did not write Beretz Kenan, I would have had a havamina, right? The what? Vino chazu betochem Beretz Kilad. That when it says Vino chazu betochem, it's talking about Beretz Kilad. Aval Beretz Kenan klalo. But if it's going to be Beretz Kenan, then for sure not. Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Meir betochem. What does it mean betochem? Kol hechadi lechumashman. Right? He comes and he says. I have to check, right? He comes and he says, 
um, every every time that it's going to be um, it's much that any place where you want you're able to take a chelik, whether it's going to be Eretz Gilad or whether it's going to be Eretz Kenan, Okay, fine. Tanya, we learned in the right. Amada bichaninam gamliel. Says the chaninam gamliel. Mashal ma davar dome. What is the mashal to what is compared to? Right, the the tanai Moshe Rabbeinu and everything. La adam sheyam yachalik nechasan levanav. Imagine right now you're coming and you're dividing your properties to your children. Amadi comes and he tells his children, "Ploni bini yiras tonit." This son is going to get this field. Ploni bini yiras tonit. The other son is going to get another field. Ploni bini ten matayim zuz the yiras tonit. Another one is going to give two hundred zuz and then he's going to get this one. Vim lo yitena if he doesn't give it yiras shimechav shana chasim. So he's just going to get regular like all the other brothers. Mi garam lo yiras shimechav shana chasim. Who was the one that caused that? He says kifelo garam. Meaning the kifelut divrahav. Meaning the fact that he said that if he's not going to give the matayim zuz. Therefore, why? Because if he did not kafal dvarav, it's mashma that if he's not going to give matayim zuz, he's only going to get a shlish from the sadash lishit. But the other two sadot, they were already to the other two brothers, and therefore he gets nothing of it. So therefore, kol shikin that he's not going to get from the chelik uh, from the sadash lishit chelik nosaf because of the other ones. So it comes out that now that the father came and he was kafal dvarav, but that's what he says. Imiten vimlo iten. Right? If he gives it, if he doesn't give. The fact that he had to say if he doesn't give, why did he have to say that if he doesn't give? Because if not, then he wouldn't have gotten bichal from the other properties. So, sure. so says the Gemara. One second, this case is not compared to our Mishnah. What was the case? One more time. We're talking about Yerusha, but it was also Tanai Kaful. And in this Yerusha, when we're talking about Tanai Kaful, he mentioned the entire Tanai Kaful. So he says, but it's not compared to the Mishnah. Hatam Ktani. There we learned that he won't inherit not even in its Kenan. And that's why Alma Kfila Leris Gilad Namiani. So therefore the Kaful helped out in Eretz Gilad. But here it taught us Who is the one that caused them to do Yerusha with other Nechasim? Kfelo Garamlo. It was this Kfelut. Alma Kfela Lisha Nechasim de Kamanu. So it comes out that the Kfela helped for the other Nechasim. Okay, fine. So it says the Gemara Lakash. It's not a question. One is before Rabbi Meir actually said, and that's what he's saying. It was said which means that they're going to take an achuza, right? The high and this one, which the tshuva, the answer of the Gemara was after it was already written. Rabbi Meir said it's v'no chazu, which means like this, right? According to Rabbi Chanina, if Moshe Rabbeinu did not do a tnai kaful, and he would have only said half the tnai. Meaning, if you guys go and fight, right, into Eretz Yisrael, then you get outside of Eretz Yisrael. So, Tzmashma, if they don't do it, they don't get nothing. Not Eretz Kenan, and Kol Shekin Eretz Gilan. Nada. They get nothing. Why? They didn't fight. They didn't come in, so they get nothing. That way would have been Mashma. Meaning, if Moshe Rabbeinu didn't make the Tanai Kafut, Kol Shekin and Eretz Gilad, they wouldn't have gotten. Now, since the Pasuk says, Shim Yavru li Lachem Eretz Kenan, they get the Gilad. Mashma Im Lo Yavru, they don't get Chalak Im Gilad. And Mila, they don't get chalik in his kinan as well. And that's what Rabbi Hanina is coming and bringing the Mishnah. Now Rabbi Min comes and he tells Rabbi Hanina, in order to learn that they shouldn't lose it completely, he brought down the Tanai Kafu. They still get it, it's kinan. Okay? So now he comes and he says, and that's why they needed the words, and it's kinan. And that's why you, you didn't need the Tanai Kafu. So this is the Mashal that Rabbi Hanina brought, because the words of the father was that if he does not give the money, he should get in the other nechassim. So that helps, right, that he's going to get the other nechassim in the first two properties. Because remember, the first two properties, each one went to another son. And the third property, he came and he said, the third property, if he gives 200 zoos, then fine. If he doesn't, then, then no. But there, there it was it was brought this down. Okay? So now he comes and he says, I understand. That's what it means when it's written in the Pasuk. Im tetiv se'et vim lo tetiv hatat ruvetz. Right? In Bereshit, what we're going to be reading tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Right? What does that mean? We come and we say in the parasha, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is giving tochacha to Kain. He's going to, he's giving remorse. Yeah? He's giving remorse. He's giving tochacha. Right? The Sefer Yasha. So he comes and he says, in the Sefer tochacha, when he's giving tochacha to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, is giving it to Kain, he comes and he says, if you're going to become better, so then say it. You're going to get sachar. You're going to get reward. But if you're not going to become better, 
בפתח אתה תרובץ. You're going to be full of all these חולניות. You're going to get everything. Don't worry about it. And, right? Exactly. All the... Yeah, but פולנות, <coughs> פולנות is more than review. פולנות is... Uh, I'm saying a fact. Calamities. Ah, yeah, yeah, the, the review. If, the calamities. If people right? know it in my chat. No. Se'et. Se'et is sakha. Right? Sakha. And, sakha. Sakha. Sakha la'olam abba. Sakha. Yeah? So he says, if he's not, he's mm-hmm. going to get פולנות. He's going to get all the bad things. Is he looking at פולנות? No, he's going to get to פולנות. Right? So he comes and he says, אלא רב חנינה, אבל קודם כל חנינה, that he does not need tonight kafu. למה לי? So then why do I need v'im not ati? Meaning this is also tonight kafu. If you behave, I'm going to do this for you. And if you don't behave, here's a smack. Why was it also kafu? It was like both sides. So he comes and he says, so why do I need it then? So he says, I mean, I want to talk, say, in titev, agra. V'im not ati, v'lo agra, v'lo dina. Because you would have had a hava mina. Listen, if you behave, I'm going to give you a reward. If you don't behave, okay, okay I'm not going to give you a reward. But I'm not going to punish you. I'll just leave you. I'll ignore you. No. If you don't behave, I'll give you the smack. That's what Akadosh Baruch Hu tells him. You understand? Right? Because sometimes you have to tell that to people in order that they behave. Okay? So, I understand according to Rabbi Meir. Hachi Nafka Mina. 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 Hachi And you're not going to give the, the wife to Yitzhak. I'm going to be patur from my shavua. What does that mean? Avraham Avinu made him make a shavua that he's going to get a, a girl from the family members, right? Now he says, what does that mean? Avraham Avinu went and he told him, right, both sides. He says, which means he, he was kafal devarav also. Right? Avraham Avinu also was kafal devarav. Right. He says, he said, Don't take a woman from Benot Kanani. Then he says, But rather you have to come and you have to go to my family. So he comes and he says, If they don't give it to you, then Which means, you didn't have to be the tnai, the ma'aseh, b'shnei atzadim. It was already just enough on the other side. But rather he comes and he says, that this was like a condition. What was the condition? From Hanina ben Gamliel, he comes and he says, Why do I need Right? It's, uh, he says, Miklal hena, ta shomea lav. Which means, why does he say, as tinake me'alati ki tavol mishpachti? Right? You already said, im lo el bet avi telech. Right? You have to come, you have to go to get it from a family member. Right? And if not, right? No, there's not going to be a shavuah. So it says the Gimara, it's the same thing. He says, I would have thought to say, hei cha deni chala ledida, in a case where it's good for the woman to get married to Yitzchak, velo ni chala ledidu, but it's not good for the family, mighty bal kurchayu, bring her against their will. Kamashmalan comes to teach you, v'im lo yitnu lach, v'yit anakim alati, which means like this. What happens if the girl agrees to come to, to Yitzchak? Which is normal. The girl always used to go to the boy. Right? Nowadays it's v'na fochu, right? But the right, the fu, it's kola yitzrot. But the, the, the concept is, right? The, the concept though is, is that the girl would always go to the boy. Always. Right? That's what, that's where it is. Okay, fine. So now what happens is as follows. Right? The girl wants to come. The family don't want. What happens in that case? So says the Gemara, I would have thought to say, so just bring her against their will. What do you care about the family? But she agrees. Come on, take her. And that's it. We'll it. Kamash Malan comes to teach you, right, that what? He says, no. If they're not going to give you the girl, right? Right? She's going to be freed. You're going to be freed from my, my Shavua. And therefore, there's no problem. That's why he had to actually bring it down. If not, And that's what Avraham Avinu comes and he says, if she doesn't want to come, then he keeps, now she's going to be, you're going to be clean from my Shavua. Why do I need this now? So he says, Yitzchik, you also need this. So I would have thought, say, what happens if the family wants, but she doesn't want? Meaning the family wants to give her over. The family says, you know who you're getting married to? Family of Avraham Avinu. Ah, you're the creme de la creme. Right? But the girl doesn't want. So what's going to happen in that case? So I would have thought also, bring her against her will. Why? The family agreed. What do I care about her? Comes to Kamash Malan, comes teaching, she doesn't want, also, you're going to be free. So, this is good according to Rabbi Meir, that's what it says in the Pasuk, that you're going to have both sides. If you're going to go in my statutes, you're going to follow the Torah, or you're going to go against the Torah. You don't need to strike a fool, because why do I need them? So, why do I need them? So says the Gemara, Yitzchik, I also need it. Tzaga, the Ra'ulot, let's say, Mechutai Telechu is a Beracha. Mechutai Telechu is the same thing, but it's not a Beracha, but not a Kelala. 
Mas when comes teaching, who quite the mass, it's a clala. Right, just like before about baby, you know, maybe the exact same thing. Okay, this should never be mean, right? I would. It's good according to me. I know that that's what it says. If you're going to listen, and if you're going to want, and you're going to listen, if you're not going to listen, you're going to rebel. According to Gamaliel, why do I need it? So he said he also needed. So I would have thought saying tovu tova lo ra. If you're going to want to do it, you're going to get tova. If you don't want to do, you're going to refrain. You're not going to get tova, but you're not going to get ra. Kamash malan, you're going to get you're going to get ra. My what is the kavana? Cherev teu kelu, right? Some mechbet amudalef on the on the top. What does it mean now? Cherev teu kelu, which is much more than the kavana is teu kelu alidei cherev, right? That means kilu the cherev is going to eat you. Amar Rava mincha gelinata naama disare akusha. He says it's tochlenu like melach gas, right? Which is going to be like lechem sorim kashe u betzalim. The Amar more and more says pat purane chareva bread, which is uh, dry, which is baked, right? In a in a big oven. Which the which the fire is on the side, which entrance is on the side. Be melach ubitzalim with salt and uh, onions. Yeah, he comes and he says kashim la guf kacharavot. It's going to be bad for the body, just like a cheref. So therefore, he comes and he says over here, right? You guys are going to have to be eating things which are very very bad for you, like cheref, like mamash, like swords. And that's what it means here that a person will come and they'll actually get this.